In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to realistically composite fantastical ice VFX in Adobe After Effects. I'm Denasa with Action VFX, and I will be your instructor for today, so let's get started. Okay, so here we have our plate from filmpack.com, and this is going to be a very simple tutorial. We're going to use the free version of Mocha to track our scene, and using one of the texture from our Action VFX Eye Textures collections to create the eye effect. You can get these assets for free if you are subscribed to Action VFX. Especially with our VFX mass sale going on, this is the perfect time to be a subscriber. More info below. We're also going to learn how to make the eyeball look realistic. Like as you can see here on our plate, the eye looks blended into the scene because it has reflection from the environment instead of just a texture of the cornea here. So the first step of course is we want to track our eyeball here. And we're going to do that using Mocha. For this tutorial, I'm using the free version, but you can also use the Mocha Pro version. Now, inside our Mocha here, I want to select an area that is perfect for tracking our eyeball. And since she's not moving a lot, we can just track her cornea here perfectly. So let's create an elliptic mask here. And of course, it's not a perfect circle because as you can see, the cornea and the eyeball is being cut off by the eye socket. Okay, let's name this eye cornea and we want to disable the shear and rotation and we're going to track forward. Okay, so we have a really good track and here you can see the edge of this mask is drifting a little bit so let's fix that. Perfect, so this tracking data is what we will use to put in our eye texture layer. But before we finish, I'm going to create another mask. And this time, I'm going to create for the eye socket. Now we have our eye socket, we don't need to retract our mask. What we need to do is to just link this eye socket to the track data of the cornea. Perfect. Great. But of course, there's a little bit of drifting, so let's fix the shape of the mask again. So now we have our track and mask data. Let's close and save. By the way, we have a lot of other content on our channel like VFX breakdowns, stock footage announcements, and other tutorials that we release weekly. So make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. And now, let's go back to the video. Now let's extract out our tracking data. So we're going to create a new null, and then we're going to go to the plate layer again. And on the tracking data, we're going to create track data, and we're going to select the eye cornea, OK, and let's change the export option to transform and layer export to eye track null, apply export. So now we have our null that is following our eye and we can start adding our eye effects. So first, let's pick an eye texture from here. Now let's scale this down and we want to turn it into 3D and we want to position it to fit our plate here. And then, of course, our eye texture here has really sharp edges. If you have an edge blur effects, you can use that to blur out the edge. But if not, you want to select your layer and then select the ellipse tool and double click it. And then let's reduce the expansion a little bit and then feather it out. And then let's color correct our eyeball here to match a little bit better with the plate. First, I want to get hue and saturation, and I want to reduce the saturation a bit because our plate is not super saturated. And then if you want to change the color of the eye texture, we can just play around with the master hue. And then we want to fix the black level of the eye texture here, because as you can see, the black color on our plates is a little bit more muted and also tinted towards blue a little bit. So you want to get curves or levels. For this, I'm using levels. And then just punch up the output black a little bit. Now, we are not going to lift up the black levels a bit too much because we're going to layer this with the reflection. And then we want to go to the RGB and punch up the blue as well, just to tint it a little bit towards the blue color. And then we want to blur our overall texture a little bit. So now let's parent our layer texture to the null and we have our eye texture tracked into the eyeball. Next, of course, we want to make this eyeball to be inside the eye socket. So let's duplicate our plate. Let's rename this eye socket mat 
and then go to the mat on the mocha and click on visible layers and we want to select only the eye socket and we want to create a e mask so now we have created this mask based on the shape that we created in mocha so now let's go to the track mat and i want to alpha mat our eye texture here into the eye socket mat and then let's blur the mask just a touch perfect all right so now let's make our eye texture blend a little bit more so as you can see what really sells the eye here is not just the texture of the cornea but also the reflection and the shadow that the eye receives and we want to emulate that although it is impossible to recreate the reflection directly because we don't know what the eyeball is reflecting we can create our own reflection map so for the reflection map i'm going to use this panoramic image of a snow environment that i got from polyheaven now let's add some blur to this reflection map and then let's disable this and put it at the bottom of our composition then we're going to create a new black solid and name it reflection sphere put it on top and we're going to add CC sphere effects. So now we have turned our layer here into a sphere and because our layer is just a black solid the sphere is just looking like a circle and here we can control the radius of the sphere and move the position. So now let's go to shading and we're not going to use the ambient and the views so we can zero it if you want but more importantly we want to reduce the metalness because this is not a metal, this is an eyeball. And once we reduce the metal, we have this specular map that you can control the intensity and also the roughness. And of course, you can also control the direction of that specularity with this dial right here. But then down here, we're going to bump up the reflection map. So let's type in something like 20. But of course, we see nothing here. That is because we have not select our reflection map. So let's select our environment texture from before and make sure that it is effects and mask. And there we go. Now, this is a little bit too much. So let's reduce the amount of the reflection just a touch. And then of course, we can bump up the specularity just a bit. Okay, so the thing about reflection is that it only reflects bright light. So darker color is not very much reflected and we have a lot of darker color here so to get rid of the darker color we're going to change this blending mode to screen perfect so now let's move this offset into the middle of our eyeball here and reduce the radius and perfect so now we have this eye reflection on our eyeball so now i want to move the light direction here so we can see the specular on top of our cornea and then of course we want to parent the movement of our reflection sphere here into the track node and then of course we are going to mask this eye sphere to fit within the eye socket but we're not going to use the mat that we already have we're going to create a new one so let's duplicate our plate name it eye socket and cornea mat and then we're going to go to the mat and then on the visible layers we're going to make sure that both of them is turned on and ok and create a e mask so now if we solo this this is what we have so the reason why i'm bringing out these two masks is because i want to feather our cornea mask without it breaching outside of the eye socket so let's press m and then on the eye socket mat we're going to select intersect so now our eye cornea is contained within the eye socket mask so let's select our eye reflection sphere and we're going to track mat it into the eye socket and cornea mat there we go so now let's play around with the mask expansion and the feather perfect so now let's reduce the opacity of our reflection just a touch so it is not too much and this is what we have our cornea with the reflection Next, to blend this a little bit more, if we look at the original plate, you can see that we have a little bit of shadow on the eyeball. So let's replicate that in a very simple way. Create a new solid and make sure it's black. Let's name it shadow, put it on top, disable it, and we're going to create a rough mask of the shadow on our cornea. And then we're going to feather it. 
and then we're going to track man it into the eye socket and cornea mat. So this is before the shadow and this is with the shadow. It adds a little bit of depth into the eye socket. And then lastly, of course, parent this eye shadow into the eye track node. And perfect. So now we have our effect. Of course, you can go back into the textures and play around with the color or the shadow or play around with the reflection a little bit. One quick tip. If you want to replace the texture of the eye instead of redoing the effects, let's just pre-compose the eye texture, Control shift c name the composition eye texture, and leave all attributes. Okay, so now inside that eye pre-comp, you can just replace your eyeball with another eye. For example, this one, and if you go back to our composition, it will get updated. Now, for the other eye, the workflow is the exact same except for the tracking because the eye cornea here is getting occluded by the nose so we cannot track that. So you want to track another part of the face that moves around the same way as that eyeball. Like for example, the eyebrow here. And then you want to create a mask shape for your cornea and use the tracking data of the eyebrow. And once again, if you're looking for VFX stock footage like we used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. We provide a vast library of high quality VFX assets that you can purchase right now for your projects. Learn more about this and our subscriptions below. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit like, subscribe, and let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. See you next time. Bye-bye.